Hi guys, today I want to talk about abbreviations. I don't know if you follow Twitter much, but there's usually at least one guy below every tweet who asks about DOL, BSL, MSB and all that stuff. So I felt like it's a pretty good uh, topic for my first video here, um, sort of to put a framework around uh, future content as well. Hope you like it. Okay, so here we have the um, first Bitcoin all-time high at uh, 65k. Um, I think it's a prime example um, on how to spot market structure. So we're coming into the structure here with higher highs and higher lows. Market structure is bullish and just continues to be bullish. A lot of people will use this as their market structure break. Um, I think especially for beginners, it's... Um, Way better to use this and i'm going to show you uh, why um whenever you see high high and then another high high um look for the lowest point between the two highs right and in this case it's here um this is decent as a market structure break but uh, in order to weed out a lot of false signals uh, in, in order to keep yourself out of trouble i would look for the lowest point and then use this as your market structure break some people use wicks some people use candle closes um, you have to figure it out on your own like there's no right or wrong um, i personally like to to use candle closes but um, yeah so we have higher high higher high you look for the lowest point between the two and once we break it then we have the msb market structure break this one is pretty should be explained that's an easy one i like to use the standout wicks on both sides this was previous buy side liquidity got taken here previous sell side got taken and now we have fresh set of buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity just look for obvious pivots on your chart and mark them out as the liquidity that might get targeted uh, in the future dul is basically the target um, that the current price action is trying to achieve um, so you can also call it uh, the magnet for price um, after we confirm the market structure break here it's pretty obvious that price is trying to rebalance lower um, and this is where the majority of the liquidity is right now resting to the downside to the sell side so the current drawn liquidity here should be this week at least and as you can see we accelerate pretty quickly a fair value gap is um, an area on the chart where the wicks between the, the first and the third of a three candle structure didn't have any overlap in price action. So for example, here we have a big daily fair value gap, candle number one, candle number three, and this is the candle number two, and there was no price action traded here. So it's a big imbalance, usually acts as a magnet for price. Um, and right now, since we're here, we have the, a new, a fresh uh, fair value gap that just uh, confirmed. Um, again, potential magnet for price. As you can see, the next day we traded into the fair value gap, and from there we continued into the direction of our drawn liquidity. So, an auto block, I would say, is a little bit subjective. The way I use them is, um, yeah, I would say different than a lot of other people use them. A can like every candle is an auto block because there have been orders that were transacted. We just want to look for these uh, auto blocks that are actually significant. And for me, what I like to see is number one, I like to see a sweep. Any form of uh, liquidity that got grabbed inside of this auto block. I then like to see a market structure break or yeah, acceleration in the other direction. And I usually like them with a favela gap that um, gets created. On a return into this level, I would usually expect a significant reaction. So OB is an auto block that I like to do business if price ever trades back into.
People refer to SMR as the smart money reversal. Basically, whoever is moving the market pushes price into a significant area of liquidity. The opposite of smart money is then called retail or considered retail. Uh, retail um, gets excited, gets bullish, gets hyped, enters the market, and the smart money is then, in this example, selling into the retail. So for future reference, this is the moment that the smart money printed a reversal on the chart. So SMR, smart money reversal. OTE is an ICT term that basically refers to the golden pocket whenever you use the FIP tool. Again, Bitcoin price section around 65K. We had a confirmation and market structure break. If we use our FIP tool from the high to the low, um, we end up with a area of confluence, which is the OT which are the OTE levels here. This would be the prime area where we would like to um, see price print a reversal pattern. And let's play this out. As you can see, we basically hit it to the tick and uh, price continued to um, trade into the drawn liquidity, which was the week down here. A power of three is um, a pattern that I first uh, got introduced uh, to by Rackproof. It usually starts with a sort of a range um, accumulation zone where the market makers um, give people time to, to build liquidity on both sides of the range. Um, it is then followed by a manipulation move. In this case, um, a bearish move. So manipulation, play this out. As you can see, we, we pushed out of the range, collected the liquidity, and th from there we saw an acceleration um, below the initial accumulation zone. So this is then the distribution. Um, it's sort of a fake out pattern, um, trap breakout traders, collect uh, the stop losses above this high, above all these highs, um, and then from there um, print a reversal. <laughs> reversal? Print, print a reversal. I hope you can edit this. If not, I'm going to do it again. You've probably heard about the term head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders. Um, the Quasimodo is basically this. Um, if you know the fictional character Quasimodo, he was a super ugly dude, sort of like a monster who lived in Notre Dame in Paris. And he was famous for being just super ugly so when people use the term qm or quasimodo they basically are referring to the head and shoulders but they can be they come they can come in any shape <laughs> <laughs> they can come in any shape way or form um because quasimodo was known for being like super asymmetric like his shoulders were one was up, one was down. He was just looking like a monster. And uh, yeah, these inverse in head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders can come in very ugly shapes. Like this is a, a picture perfect one. And if we look at the Bitcoin top here again, it's sort of, I would consider this to be still more on the symmetric side, but it could also look like some like really strange. And then, yeah, this would also be a Quasimodo AQM. <clears throat> this is a quick one. Whenever you see a level in your chart that you know has significant liquidity resting above or below and it gets taken out, we usually refer to it as um, this level, this level being rated on this candle. Now that we've talked about the QM, we can also talk about the double confirmation or the DC. Once we print the first confirmation, here on the market structure break. Um, we just want to basically see the same pattern play out again inside of this now fresh uh, POI. So we see the price goes below the POI, trades back into it. And here we can see another rate of liquidity and then followed by a market structure break to the downside, confirming that price is seeking lower levels of liquidity for a second time, or in this case, double confirming 
the price wants to head lower. So whenever you see a key level that gets taken out on your chart, in this example, the Bitcoin low at $30,000, um, we took out the liquidity and then we basically never really closed below. So this then ends up being the sponsored candle. Um, the candle that rated the liquidity, but uh, never really managed to close below. It's then referred to as the sponsored candle in the future. Um, and the reason we use it or I use it is because we can expect this level to um, be retested at least once, maybe even several times um, and might offer like good entries in the future because we expect that whoever pushed price down here to collect the liquidity is now interested in uh, mitigating these orders on a retest before, um, yeah, hopefully moving higher in this example. So um, let me play out this example because this is exactly what happened here. So we came back here, uh, mitigate some orders. Um, we're gonna, gonna now retest it another second time. There you go. Um, not only do we do we retest the candle, but we also take out this liquidity that we built here earlier. Um, and now the move is complete and we can rebalance uh, higher. That does it for today. Thank you guys for watching. You probably know the drill by now. Like, subscribe and comment helps the channel a bunch. And I hope to see you in the next video.